some protesters are uh, saying that instead of a nuclear energy, we can go for a green energy like uh, uh, other uh, wind, uh, solar. What do you think about that? See, the clean green energy is the future of the world. Certainly, wind energy, solar energy, nuclear energy is the future of the green energy, clean energy. But if you look at as of, as of today, as per the latest technological strength and the efficiency factor, if you compare it, nuclear energy stands at the top. If you look at the solar energy, the efficiency of the solar cell today is around 20%. The research effort is on to improve the efficiency of the solar cell from the present 20% to the 50% using carbon nanotubes. The research is already on in US and India and many other nations. Uh, they have already demonstrated the technology at the laboratory scale. But commercial level application certainly will take another 5 years time, minimum 5 years time to come to the commercial stage. But even then, Solar energy alone, even though it is costly, certainly it has to start now. At the same time, wind energy, if you look at it, wind energy is dependent upon the wind speed and the wind conditions. It, the efficiency is only around 30% to 40%. If you look at solar energy, it is around 20% efficiency. If you look at nuclear energy, it is 100% efficient. So, when you compare it to the coal energy, if you look at coal energy, due to the coal, the poor uh, quality of the coal, it is uh, today what we get is around 40, 58% of the efficiency. So, if you compare to the nuclear energy, it is 100%, coal energy is 58%, solar energy is 20% and wind energy is 30%. Then how do you compare it? So, if you talk about the clean energy, solar energy, wind energy, nuclear energy. So, nuclear energy stands top at the world. Sir, what is the uh, expectation of uh, energy uh, requirement by 2020 or by 2030? And what is the present level of generation? See, presently in India is generating about 1,50,000 megawatt. Our requirement by 2020 is around 4 lakh megawatt power to be generated. If you look at the energy um, combination, by 2030 we have to generate 9,50,000 megawatt. With the energy mix, what is available in India is we can generate another additional 80,000 megawatt from the coal. If you get a pure coal or a liquefied <coughs> coal, another 50,000 megawatt has to come from the uh, uh, sorry, hydro energy. Another 55,000 megawatt has to come from the solar energy. 64,000 megawatt has to come from the wind energy. 50,000 megawatt has to come from nuclear energy. This is the energy mix. So, we cannot depend only on one type of energy. So, we have to have an energy mix based on the natural resource availability, based on our accessibility and based on the technology available. So, with that energy mix only, we can achieve uh, 4, 4 lakh megawatt of power by 2020. Is not that 50,000 nuclear energy be substituted with other type of energy? It is very difficult, that's what I told you again already. From other energy, your energy efficiency is very, very uh, less, 50% and less. But uh, so uh, nuclear energy, you will be able to generate 100%. Then that leads me to the cost factor. Then uh, how do you compare See, the cost of all cost these factor, if you look at, if you for generating hydro energy, 3 crore per megawatt, 3 to 4 crore per megawatt, if you generate thermal energy, 4 to 5 crore per megawatt. If you generate wind energy, 7 to 8 crore per megawatt. If you generate nuclear energy, 6 to 7 crore per megawatt. Okay. If you generate solar energy, 10 to 12 crore per megawatt. This is the present megawatt generation ca capability. If you want to generate solar energy, solar energy alone, if you look at it, it is not economical. So you have to couple the solar energy with the desalination of water or a water generation. Both you couple it, then solar energy becomes viable. So when you design a policy, the uneconomical energy has to be coupled with another product so that it becomes economical. So but nuclear energy is not like that. Nuclear energy 
it can directly is 100% efficiency, efficiency, it is a safe, clean and green energy. So that is why nuclear energy is very important part of the energy mix when compared to the other energy. Certainly one energy cannot be the substitute for other. Okay. So now recently there was a news item I have read about Kalam NSS solar energy, space solar energy. What is that space solar energy? Can it be used for uh, uh, big countries like this? See, what is that particular initiative? See, it is called uh, uh, when Dr. Kalam is propagating how to bring uh, power from the space solar. So that means launching a solar satellite of 10 tons of capable solar satellite on the space and from there solar energy today solar energy 12 hours of uh, uh, power uh, 12 hours of sunlight is available but when you launch a solar satellite 24 hours you will be able to receive the solar power to the ground so launching the solar satellite of 10 tons capacity is beyond the capacity of any nation as of today so to launch that kind of the uh, satellite, 10 tons of the satellite, we need an international cooperation. So Dr. Kalam started this mission of sp bringing space, space solar power from the space. He started and working for last five years and recently he, he interacted and he worked with uh, Aldrin. You know, he is a co-passenger with uh, Neil Armstrong. He, with Aldrin and uh, another uh, NSS, National Space Society and uh, other group of uh, people in US and India, in India, ISRO and the DRDO uh, together. He is propagating uh, how to bring the uh, power from the solar. So when he propagated, certainly America came forward and he felt this is the energy, this is the kind of the perennial resource of energy which is very vital for the future growth when all the fossil fuel exhausted, when the other uh, nuclear fuel exhausted, then we need to bring the uh, power from the space, from the solar. So for that, it is not a uh, five-year mission, it is a 30 years mission. So Dr. Kalam has put a seed, okay, so that this seed will culminate into a reality, maybe after 30 years. So how much of uh, how much of uh, energy that we can produce? Will it uh, be helpful for the countries like India and not US? Not only India, entire world can be powered once it is possible. Entire world can be powered with very less uh, amount. But launching the ten tons of satellite is a big mission. So they have to work off work cost of access to space is today per kg payload to launch into the space is uh, per kg twenty thousand dollars per kg today as of now. So we have to launch a reusable uh, space launch vehicle uh, with the technology developed and where India is now uh, pioneering the hypersonic uh, space missile. So that space vehicle which will help. For that international cooperation is required, lot of investment is required, lot of international uh, space powered nations have to come together and jointly work together to achieve this mission. That is why uh, NSS, National Space Society of America and uh, they have uh, captured the concept of Dr. Kalam and created the initiative called Kalam NSS Space Mission, Space Solar Power Mission. So do you think that by 2030 India will uh, reach uh, energy independence or is it possible? See the kind of the uh, GDP growth what India is moving to 9% GDP growth, certainly if you can achieve by 10% uh, uh, increase the GDP growth into 10% and maintain it, maintain it for next 10 years, certainly we will be able to achieve this uh, uh, energy independence by 2030. Energy independence to what extent we may need energy by 2030? Means, see, na normally energy security means whatever you produce, okay, you should be able to, whatever you need, you should be able to produce. Energy independence means whatever we come out of the fossil fuel cycle. Whatever we need from the fossil fuel and the green energy, okay, will give you energy security. But one energy independence means you come out of the fossil fuel and develop the green, clean, clean and green energy from wind, solar and nuclear and bio, biofuel. Then it is called energy independence. We will achieve energy independence. Thank you very much, Mr. Pondra. Thanks. Thanks.